We are now in lecture note number 7, vibration control part 2, and our focus in this lecture note is on vibration isolation. Coming back to this slide again, there are three different ways of controlling the vibration. So we have discussed about this general approach in lecture note number 6 before, and our focus is now in vibration isolation. So what is vibration isolation? Generally speaking, we are putting an isolator, so uh, a material such as rubber, because it is damp and very compliant, to separate the, the object of interest um, that we would like to protect and the source of vibration. And because we are talking about two different systems, we are going to talk about two different parameters of interest. So what are they? Let's look at the two different cases of force vibration one more time. So as we discussed before, there is this case of external excitation and also the case of base excitation. Now to review very shortly, external excitation is, uh, for instance, the case of a vibrating machinery. So the machine is vibrating and we would like to protect the ground or the building from being transmitted unnecessary vibration from the machinery. And under case number two, the base excitation, this is usually the case of a building which is oscillating due to an earthquake. Oh, under the two uh, different cases, we are dealing with the damping because we are including the damper to include in the model. So that's why we can get the relationship of this x divided by y or this ft divided by f naught. So um, this is what we call the transmissibility ratio. Transmissibility ratio. You can always think about this transmissibility ratio as the magnification factor because they have similar concept, but Magnification factor is usually used for uh, static deflection. So now in the concept of vibration isolation, the more correct terminology used is trans transmissibility. So that's why we are going to use this concept. And uh, depending on the case, we are dealing with different concept of transmissibility. So for case number one, we are thinking about force transmissibility or how much force being transmitted to the output. So O is the original, T is transmitted. So again, this is output divided by input. As well, in case number two, what we are dealing with is displacement transmissibility. How much displacement is being transmitted from the input? So Y is the input, X is the output. Um, there is nothing um, much different from the concept of magnification factor. If we look at the equation, there is this additional factor of zeta added to the equation. So if we take the case of zeta equals to zero, for instance, meaning there is no damping, so this term will go to zero, this term will go to zero, this will be uh, taken the square root, and then finally, we are going to arrive at the original equation of the magnification factor. So they are the same, except that uh, there is this additional zeta factor. Now, there is this additional note, though the expressions of um, this displacement transmissibility and force transmissibility are the same, they are the same. But we need to think that they actually come from different problems and uh, hence they describe different phenomena. Next, this slide will give you an additional information of what we have discussed so far. So this is the case of uh, the case number two. This is to protect our motivation is to protect the device from the motion of its point of attachment or the base. And another example we can give is the tractor's cabin mounting. Whereas for case number one, we are we want to protect the point of attachment from vibration of the mass. 
Another example is the engine mounting. And for both cases, the design process is usually equal. We need to choose the zeta and r, the ratio of the frequencies, such that the tr, what is tr? tr is again the transmissibility ratio, the transmissibility ratio, be it this uh, force transmissibility or uh, displacement transmissibility. We would like the value of tr to be small. That means the transmitted vibration is low. Next is the concept of TR graph, transmissibility ratio graph. This is again very similar to the magnification factor graph, except that we are now introducing uh, zeta to the equation. First of all, we need to define uh, the critical point. The critical point is square root of 2. So when the value of r, the ratio of omega divided by omega n is square root of 2, this equation will be, this will turn into 1. So that's why the value of x will equal to the value of y. So that's why people will generally divide this uh, TR graph into two different domains. So first is to the left hand side, we are calling it the amplification region. And then to the right hand side, we are calling it the isolation region. So let's try to discuss it. Of course, in the magnification factor graph, we discussed that um, this is the case of resonance. So that's why the magnification or the uh, transmissibility is very high. But one of the strategy to reduce this transmissibility is to increase the value of zeta, the value of damping. We had learned about this. So as the value of damping increases, we are going to see that the peak of the graph in this amplification region will drop as well. But the opposite happens for the isolation region because if we are going to see this region in the magnified version, so this is the magnified version, we are going to see the opposite trend in which the, the lower the value of zeta, the better. So the lower the value of zeta, the value of the transmissibility will go down. So um, very generally, in the context of TR graph, when we design this vibration isolation, we would like to bring the operation within this isolation region. So we want our R to be larger than square root of 2. Let's try to discuss the sample problem given in this lecture note. This is a sample problem taken from Inman. You can consult the textbook for more details. Now, suppose we have an electronic control system for an, a car engine, and it is to be mounted off the fender inside the engine compartment of the car. So this is the module. We would like to mount it uh, inside the engine compartment but then we are concerned about the vibration coming out of the engine will it impact the electronic module if so we would like to reduce the level of vibration so now we are trying to model it very simply as this you know you've got this fender as the base and then you've got this module which you would like to protect you are going to design a suitable isolator so that you can minimize the vibration which is transmitted to the module. Now let's uh, look at it. Now the, the, the instruction is to design the isolator, meaning to pick the value of suitable C and K. Known to us, the mass of the module is 3 kg, and then the dominant vibration or the vibration of the fender is approximated by this equation. From this equation, of course, we can we can get to know your, the capital Y, the amplitude of the external vibration, as well as the omega. 
Here it is desired to keep the displacement of the module less than 0.005 meter at all times. So this is your capital X. You want it to be less than this value. You are also asked to calculate the magnitude of the force transmitted to the module through the isolator. How are we going to solve this problem? First of all, let's state the requirement. The condition we need to meet is that x is 0.005. And from this, we can calculate the required TR, the transmissibility ratio. So this is 0 0.5. Let's come back to the equation of TR. Mathematically speaking, this means that with the given value of TR, we need to solve the two unknowns, which is zeta and R. Zeta to find the value of C, and R is to uh, find the value of omega N, and subsequently to find the value of K. And this is quite challenging without any additional condition or, of, uh, or requirement. So that is why it is better for us to look at the TR graph. We can see that if we would like to achieve the value of TR to be 0 0.5, we draw a line here. It crosses so many other uh, curves here. So meaning that we can pick any different points here corresponding to different value of zeta and r. So it is being uh, tabulated here that there are many possible solutions. Say for instance, if the value of zeta is 0 0.01, the r is 1.73. Or say for instance, if we are picking this point, or uh, this point, meaning this is the point where your r is uh, 3.76 and then your zeta is 1. Having evaluated so many possible solutions, we just need to pick up one possible solution. So let's say that we try to pick this combination of r and zeta. Now with this value, of course, with r is known, we can know the ratio of omega and omega n. And omega is known from the problem, so that's why your, your omega n could be calculated to be 20.231 radian per second. And from here as well, we can try to find the value of k, which is this value and zeta from the corresponding value of zeta here we can get the value of c which is this much now let's try to discuss what the val the obtained value of k and c mean now together the value of k and c with the geometric size of the module and fender shape now you can try to use them to choose the isolation material. You can try to look for a catalog and try to search for materials such as spring or whatever that has the uh, closest values of K and C. Suppose if none in your catalog meet these values, now you can try to go back to the TR graph and try to find other possible combination of solutions you know because remember that there are possible other possible solutions with different combination of r and zeta as well with uh, from this table and if many solutions are still available now it is your turn to add other parameters of interest such as for instance of course we are interested in cost which one is the most uh, low cost and then ease of assembly for instance temperature range and so on.